Hello, welcome again to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our pro program is a collaboration of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter, known as the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. I'm coming to you from the campuses of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, and today we'll uh, discuss a case of uh, uh, maybe uh, not so uncommonly encountered uh, lesion in the GI tract, a 55-year-old male who presents with epigastric pain, some melanotic stool, and uh, is discovered to have an eight centimeter mass in the body of the stomach. So uh, following uh, biopsies, that uh, lesion is removed. And uh, we see the lesion here. I'll just orient it here for a better up-down uh, sense. And you can see we have mucosa here along the top. And then we have this crater-like ulceration here, uh, which uh, is uh, filled with uh, ulcer debris. Uh, and that has been induced by this uh, tumor that is present uh, beneath the mucosa, not with a mucosal surface involvement, at least that we can identify here um, going on. So uh, looking here just to see what we would expect to see in an ulcer of this sort. Uh, and you can see that we have inflammatory debris and areas of uh, tumor uh, necrosis that are uh, going on here. And obviously uh, bleeding and uh, loss of uh, cellular material out into the lumen uh, of this lesion. Turning our attention to look at the uh, tumor itself, we see that it has a very striking spindle cell uh, morphology. Uh, we can see uh, fascicles of uh, spindle-shaped cells, elongated nuclei, uh, delicate vasculature uh, in between, and some areas uh, like this here on the left, maybe a little bit lower cellularity, uh, alternating and in between uh, these areas of higher cellularity. Uh, again, the nuclei have some degrees of atypia. Uh, there aren't a striking number of mitotic figures. Um, uh, and no atypical mitotic figures, at least uh, so far. As we look around, we see that this is uh, somewhat nodular, uh, these nests uh, and uh, clusters of cells, um, and that's a characteristic of the growth pattern of this lesion. Um, it is uh, present here in the submucosa as sort of nodular areas as well, and we can see the vasculature uh, associated with that uh, with areas of hemorrhage. So we don't see any of the cleft-like spaces that we saw recently in the glomus tumor. Uh, we have a spindle cell neoplasm uh, with a very uh, uh, sort of aggressive uh, pattern with ulceration. Uh, and then the question would be, well, how does this uh, tumor stain? Is it the most commonly encountered uh, lesion that we expect uh, here in the stomach uh, and elsewhere of the mesenchymal origin? Uh, or is it one of the other lesions? And in fact, of course, on biopsy, this was found to be positive for DOG1 and CD117, uh, making the diagnosis of GI stromal tumor uh, fairly uh, straightforward. This is the most commonly encountered stromal tumor in the GI tract. Uh, it does present uh, primarily in adulthood, uh, usually over age 60, and commonly is associated with some measure of abdominal pain or bleeding. Uh, it can be present anywhere in the tubular GI tract. Uh, the stomach is the most frequent site. Uh, primarily, it involves the muscularis propria. And so again, if the lesion is centered in the submucosa, think something else. If it's centered in the, advent, uh, the uh, serosa, think other lesions. Um, on biopsy, occasionally the epithelioid uh, types can be mistaken for other lesions. Um, and uh, the immunohistochemistry in this case uh, includes D CD117 and DOG1. Uh, usually also CD34 positive, though not in all cases. So sometimes the differential with solitary fibrous tumor, uh, which would be CD34 positive as well, uh, may be a little bit difficult. Desmond, uh, other muscle markers, and S100 are usually uh, negative. And critical uh, features that you want to pay attention to our size, site, and the mitotic rate, uh, because those are going to help you to stratify the tumor according to uh, uh, 
certain risk criteria, putting it into a high risk of recurrence, low risk of recurrence, and so forth. Now, the morphology of these tumors can be variable. We've shown you a spindle cell lesion. I'd like you to take a look here at another lesion, uh, which also is a GI stromal tumor, but as you can see, it's much more uh, cellular and uh, more amphiphilic in color. Uh, and this is what's termed the epithelioid morphology of these tumors. So you can see here, these have much more rounded nuclei, uh, nesting appearance of some of the cells, and a very epithelioid appearance that might be mistaken for diffuse type gastric carcinoma, uh, metastatic melanoma, um, other epithelioid type lesions uh, can all look like this uh, <clears throat> and present in the stomach. Um, so this morphology is uh, also within the realm uh, but the staining may be uh, differ different in some circumstances. Uh, it's important to recognize that potential variant and to be alert for it uh, so that you don't neglect to include um, uh, GI stromal tumor markers in uh, your di differential consideration of some of the epithelioid neoplasms. Now, the other thing to be aware of is the fact that these lesions uh, are associated with a couple of different mutations. So the most commonly uh, are CKIT mutations, uh, which although rarely germline, can be germline mutations. They also have platelet-derived growth factor alpha, alpha uh, mutations, and in some circumstances can have succinate dehydrogenase mutations. Uh, these, of, of course, uh, may prompt different um, mutation, or excuse me, different uh, targeting drugs. Um, and so that sometimes is important to recognize. Uh, I pointed out the areas of hypocellularity that we can see in some areas, and sometimes this change is quite abrupt, as you see here. Um, also, these tumors can be associated with neurofibromatosis type 1, uh, particularly if they present in the small bowel. So when do you do mutation testing? Well, if your markers um, are negative and you have typical morphology, that's certainly a, a good indication. If you failed frontline therapy, that's certainly another good epi, uh, indication. And also uh, the epithelioid cell type uh, sometimes is itself an indication to do uh, mutation testing. Now, another factor that can be uh, quite uh, deceptive is that these tumors can present outside the tubular tract in rare instances. So here's an example uh, of a case that presented in the diaphragm and you see here typical spindle cell morphology. Uh, it looks just like a GI stromal tumor, uh, but you'd have to wonder, is this a solitary fibrous tumor? Is it some other sarcoma? And so forth. So including these lesions uh, in the differential for spindle cell tumors uh, outside the uh, tubular tract is also important. Uh, small tumorlets have been described in the uh, um, bladder. Uh, here's another part of this component. You see here a portion of the liver. Uh, so primary tumors can also occur uh, in the liver, uh, bile ducts, and so forth as well. Um, another uh, factor to be aware of uh, is that uh, the cellularity can be quite variable. This is one of those tumors in the liver, um, and uh, this may have been a tumor that was uh, partially responsive to therapy and hyalinized and uh, but still persisted with a bit of a mass uh, leading to uh, excision and as you can see here small area of spindle cell proliferation uh, still consistent with a, a gi stromal tumor so uh, that brings us into our final sign out uh, diagnosis today gi stromal tumor of the stomach uh, in this case it was an eight centimeter mass putting it in kind of the intermediate uh, risk category with a low mitotic rate and uh, the patient uh, following resection uh, has done quite well. So we hope that you uh, enjoyed that and that if you uh, liked uh, that, you'll comment below and uh, hopefully subscribe so that you don't miss super, uh, future uh, editions of our continuing series of uh, uh, digital slide uh, uh, reviews and other uh, lecture uh, contents that we will also be posting in the future. Thanks very much for joining us, and as always, we welcome your comments and suggestions. 
uh, reach out to me at the either by Twitter or at my email, and I look forward to hearing from you.